In this video you are going to learn how to generate infinite product animation backgrounds and they can be abstract like this or you can make one with cloth as well. First we're going to make the abstract one now. If you animate this you can see it is just moving around like this and it looks very soft and smooth and uh, interesting as well. So uh, this is something that we can opt for and go ahead and make a nice product animation background. For now I am simply going to turn this off and we're going to do it again. Let's add a plane. Shift A plane. Let's bring it right over there and I'm going to open up the geometry nodes tab right over here. Click on new and we're going to delete the group input. We do not need the plane. We actually need a grid because from the grid we can decide how much geometry it has. And let's plug it in there like so. Let's increase the size of this by a bit so it can cover the entire area like so. Now we also need a lot more geometry. So I'm going to set it to 256 like this. And now we have a lot of geometry to work with. Now basically what we want to do is create a displacement map. And the way we're going to do it is simply by adding a set position node, set position right over here. Then I'm going to add a noise texture underneath there. And we're going to plug it into the offset. But as you can see, it is also shifting its position. And we do not want that actually. So I'm going to bring in a factor math node right over there. Factor math, subtract, and subtract it by 0.5 and this will bring it to its original position. And now this is correct. Now of course this doesn't look very appealing as of yet. So all we can do is change the scale. So let's set the scale to 1. Let's go over to this tab for now so we can actually see what we're doing. We can increase or decrease the detail, play around with the roughness to make it softer or harder and then it will look something like this. We can also play around with the scale and uh, this is the basis of the animation. Of course this is not a lot but we have to set this to 4D and now with the W slider we can animate these values and it's already looking a little bit like an ocean and uh, we can make it look like cloth a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add a factor math node once again, factor math right here and we want to multiply it with something else so that it becomes a different type of animation. Now if we multiply with zero, of course nothing happens but if we multiply it with a higher value stuff seems to be going on here. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the position data from this grid and the way to do it is actually by bringing in a position node and this will read the position from whatever is being plugged into it. It's going to follow this line and then all the way over here it will read the position of this grid. Now I want to separate some of the axes. So this is the x-axis, the y-axis and I want to separate it. Separate x, y, z and we're going to separate the x-axis right over there because then it will be moving towards that side. So I'm going to bring in a math node a normal map node, not a factor map node in this case. And I will set it to sine or cosine. I'm going with sine for now. It only has one slot, so I'm going to place it from the x into the value. And then right over here, I'm going to add a combine xyz because we need something to output as well. Combine xyz and this will turn this float value once again into a vector that we can use into the multiply. So if we add this to the vector, nothing really happens. And the reason for it is because we have nothing to drive any of this animation. So I'm going to add a math node once again, bring it before this entire setup. And if we play around with this, you can see that the waves are moving. We get some sort of waviness going on here. And that's exactly what we want, but it's not necessarily the end of it. So I'm going to bring in another math node. I'm actually just going to duplicate this one and I'm going to set it to multiply. Why? Well, if we increase this, we increase the amount of waves that we are getting. And it looks like this. Now, if you animate this slider, we get some waves going over this entire area. And doesn't that look cool already? Pretty much it does. But we also need to add something else because these waves are not high enough. And I actually want to change that. I want these waves to be higher. And the way to do it is simply by getting another position node. I'm going to duplicate the separate XYZ node. I'm going to duplicate the combine XYZ node. And I'm going to plug the position into the vector, the Z into the Z, because we only want the Z data. And I am going to multiply this once again. So this multiply, I will place all the way over here. And let's set it into the vector. Well, nothing happens. So I'm going to add another math node, math node right over here. And if we increase this, the Z increases as well. So now if we play around with this value, we get the waves. And if we play around with this value, it determines the height of some of those waves. So you can go as crazy as you want with this. And then we will have some effect that looks like this. Let's decrease the scale to like 0.2 or 0.3. And we can also play around with the distortion to get some cool abstract effects like this. Now if we play around with the W slider, things will move like this, which also looks pretty cool and abstract. But for our cloth simulation, this is maybe a bit too weird. And that's why we added this part right here. So now we can get some waves all the way until the end. Now the way to actually make this look good is to rotate it, RX90. 
Let's go ahead and let's look right over there. And you can see the jagged edges and maybe it's a bit too big as well. So I'm going to scale it down, simply doing it in the object mode right over there. I will go to the set position and right after that, I will bring in a set shade smooth note. And right now this will look a little bit more smooth and that's exactly what we want. From here on, we have two options and I'm going to show both of them. So set material and I'm going to add a material. Now drag this upwards and add a new material in the shader editor note, new. And I'm going to call this abstract. Now let's select abstract right over here. And the thing that we can do is add a geometry node. And the geometry has all types of different data uh, with regard to this grid. And in this case, we want to use the pointiness which determines how high certain values are and certain values aren't. So if we hold control shift and click, we can actually see what this is doing. Of course, you need to go into the proper view in order to actually see it and you can play around with this and you can see what it does but in this case we are simply going to be using the pointiness now we don't see a lot happening right now so we have to add a color ramp and if we increase the slider and increase this one as well in order to bring in some contrast we can see what's going on but it only works in cycles so right now you can see that some areas are white and some areas are black. And of course, you can change the color of this. So if we plug this into the base color of the principal BSDF, we can actually change the colors of this. So let's make this a uh, like pinkish tone, maybe something like this. And let's turn this one into a bluish tone. So let's go ahead and do that. And now you can already see that we get a pretty interesting looking effect. Make sure that the colors are bright. And this already looks pretty cool. If you animate this, it's pretty much done. But one extra final touch that you can add is actually by bringing in a area lamp, scaling it up, increasing the power, Rx, and let's move it like this and have it come from this area, for example, maybe increase the strength of this just a little bit and then simply change the color. So if we change the color to, uh, let's say a yellowish tone, we get this yellowish glow on the background as well. And you can do this with multiple colors. So you can also use the area lamp to, let's say for example, make it more purple right over there. And what we can also do is maybe bring one to the bottom and have it be a bit more bluish or greenish, whatever you like. And in this fashion, you can really shape the way the scene looks, the background looks. And then once again, if you go into the geometry nodes, uh, you can increase the size, for example, of these uh, of the background. And you can play around with the W slider to have it move like this, or you can add the waves by adding them like so. And this already looks pretty cool. But a different technique I want to show you is by bringing in a fabric texture. So this is the abstract texture. Right now, I'm going to create a new texture. I'm going to this tab plus, and this is material six, and I will call it fabric texture like so. And now all we need to do is go into the geometry nodes material, which is right over here, abstract, we should call it fabric. So give it the fabric texture. Uh, let's also turn off the area lights that we created just now, right over here. And now it's basically just white, which also has its appeal if you ask me, but we can change some things about this in order to make it look like a glass simulation. So I'm going to press control shift T in order to bring in the nose wrangler add-on and I'm going to add a fabric texture and I'm going to bring in fabric 26 because I know it has color and you basically want to pick one that has color because otherwise you can't change it If it's already white, you cannot give it a random color anymore So this one is red and I'm going for this one So let's click on okay and as you can see something is happening, but it's really not doing the UVs correctly I don't see any type of fabric going on here And the reason for it is because we do not have an accurate UV now We can change that but not like this because this only works for procedural texturing So how do you actually bring in a UV map the way to do it is actually by creating some information right over here that's going to store the UV map which is already in the grid and this UV map we can store in our store named value it is called and then we can spawn that information into our shader editor. And the way it works is as follows. I'm going to bring in a attribute, store named attribute, and I'm going to plug it right in between. Now this is not flow data, it's vector data. It's going in all directions, in all vectors. It's going that way, that way, that way, that way. So we need to set this to vector. And I'm going to bring in the UV map and bring it into the value. So this is the value that it's going to store. It's going to store the UV map value of this grid. And I'm going to call it appropriately UV map. I'm going to copy it already, UV map, and then I will bring up my shader editor, go right over here, delete this texture coordinate node. I'm going to bring in a attribute right over here. And the attribute has several different options, but right now I'm simply going to call in our UV map. 
And if I place this vector into the vector of the mapping, you can see that our texture just appeared. Now, of course, this doesn't look very good as of yet. So we can change the scale and the rotation right here. So let's change the scale. Let's increase this a little bit. Maybe even change the rotation like 90. And now we got to change the color of this. So if I open this up, hue, saturation and value, we can decrease the saturation to remove all the color that's in there. Or you can leave some saturation in it and change the hue in order to become maybe a bit more bluish or reddish or yellowish and whatever type of color you would like. Now, perhaps in this case, I am going for a slight pinkish tone, a little bit less saturated but I will increase the value, make it a bit lighter, something like this. And I actually don't like this texture because it has a lot of stripes. So we can also take another one. I'm just going to bring in a white one simply for demonstration purposes. But you can choose whatever texture you like. Now, of course, this is already a little bit more like a fabric texture. So all we have to do is increase the scale and make sure that it looks like a fabric texture right over there. Of course, once again, we can add in an area lamp, make it very strong and have some light shine onto it, create some cool looking shadows and some more depth. And as you can see, this already looks a bit more like cloth. And we can animate the cloth in the geometry node section right over there. Now, if you want to automate this, that's also possible. You can bring in a scene time, plug the frame into the value, and then it will be way too fast. As you can see right here, it's kind of jittery, but we can change that value by adding a math node and either dividing it or multiplying it by a number. So I'm going to divide it by let's say 100 and now it is moving very slowly with the waves and that looks pretty cool. But if we want to animate this exactly in the same fashion as this one is going because it's going very fast and then it's going slower, we have to keep this node selected. I'm going to drag this upwards, go to the timeline, timeline right over here, go to the very first frame and uh, perhaps we want it to be very fast in the beginning. So let's set it to 30. Then let's see how fast this is, pretty fast. And I also want to animate the W slider at the same time. So I'm going to bring in this very same divide note into the W slider. Let's see what it looks like. Very cool, very cool. It can be a little bit slower. So I'm going to divide it by 40. What I'm going to do basically is add another math note right here because I want the waves to be a bit faster. I'm going to multiply it by two, multiply it by 0.5. And then the waves will be a little bit faster. And then I will go ahead to the divide, go to frame one, click on the divide node, press I, then go over to the noise texture, then go over to the very last frame and it should be 100, press I. Now we need to keep this node selected. We also need to keep the geometry node setup selected right over here. And then I'm going into the graph editor. Let's open up the geometry nodes, A and dot, and here it is. Now, if you remember, you gotta bring this one upwards then take this one, go to frame 26 and take this and slide it over there. And then it will slow down its pacing. In geometry notes, we can now see that it looks like this. And what I've decided to do is to change this to a very white and pristine color like this. And the way I did it is by heading over into the shader editor, right over here, going to the shader editor and I will add a hue, saturation and value node and I will plug it right after this entire setup because we determined the pointiness of this. So now we have some purple right over there and there's some bluish tones, but maybe I think it's a bit too much and I want to change the color. Now we can do that very easily. You can either change the hue and as you can see, you already get a very different look out of this. But what I'm going to do in this specific case is I'm going to make it more white. So I'm going to decrease the saturation and the saturation actually determines how much color is in there. And if you set it to zero, the color should actually be well white because if we turn off the lighting you can see this is entirely white and I kind of like and I kind of like this look so maybe I'm just going for white maybe I am going to use all of these lighting setups that we gave some specific colors and then I'm going to increase the value as well to make it even more white and now we have these subtle tones that the area light created for us on the white background and it looks very clean and pristine you don't want it to be too busy or too distracting from the iPhone itself it should just be a very calm and neutral background now going over into the geometry node editor we've decided the grid and we gave it a store named value that is if you are going to use a uv map for this in this case i'm simply using the abstract material so we are not going to be using the uv map anyway so you could delete it if you want to i'm just going to leave it there it doesn't hurt anything in our process so the set position node is driving the displacement which we use the noise texture for and the noise texture is being driven on the w and the w basically means like move around move around the scale and whatever we've got right over here and uh, that is being animated by this um, scene time 
which determines that on whatever frame we are, output a value, and we change those values using math. So let's say the value was 100, now we divided it by 100, so now it's one frame, it's very slow. And then we can also change that using the multiply node. And I've used that in both of these, so I added an extra one, I added this extra multiply node to determine how fast or how many waves there are. So let's increase this uh, in this mode right over there. And if we increase this, you can actually see the speed of the waves changing. So now they are very fast. And I'm going to press on minus eight because I want them to move upwards. Now, if you want to change the way that this is moving, because now it's moving diagonally, right? And maybe you don't want it to move diagonally. Maybe you want it to move to the side or upwards or whatever. So the way to fix that is actually by going over here, because this is the setup for our waves, and this is the setup for the intensity of the wave itself, as you can see. Now, we can make this a whole lot less strong, so maybe something like, uh, like this. And we are going to add a vector math node once again. Vector math node right in here. I'm going to set it to multiply, and as you can see, everything turns flat. And that is great. Because now, if we want to change the area of our waves, it's starting from zero. So we are adding from zero, and that's why this is happening. But if we already have a value on one, you will have the waves immediately. So let's set this to one on the top one, and you will see exactly what it does. I'm going to bring this upwards, maybe open up a timeline, set it to the beginning. And now you can see that the waves are moving from left to right. And you can also change it when you take the middle value, for example, it will move upwards. Now you can also use negative values if you wanted to move downwards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to one and then it's moving sideways, but I want it to move upwards as well. So I'm going to increase this Y value just a little bit like so. And now we can determine in which direction the waves are going. And that is a very great way to even enhance this entire geometry node setup. Now, what I'm going to do, because I feel like this is way too much, I'm going to decrease the scale. I'm going to decrease it to 0.1. And as you can see, this looks very clean. And that's actually the goal, because if we look from the camera view right now, it is very clean and pristine looking. If we increase the scale, it might detract a lot of attention away from this iPhone. And we actually want people to be focused on the iPhone. And the difference that we are making right here is that right now we have a moving and interesting looking background that looks very cool. Because if we were to add just a normal white plane, it's also pretty cool looking. However, this just adds that little extra touch that gives it this type of quality. And it's going to be very subtle, but it's going to be good. And right now, this is the background that we're going to be working with. You can determine the speed and the scale of this, but as you can see, my waves are moving very slowly, very clean. We are in control here. There's no need to have giant waves going like this in the background. We can make it like this and it looks very cool and maybe a little bit luxurious as well. So that's the way that we are going to do this. And now we are finally ready to render this entire animation. So the way I'm going to do it is simply by heading over here, clicking on this little box, and I will render out this entire image, the entire 72 frames. I will set the color depth to 16 because it's always better to have more color control later on. I am going to do this in PNG because I do believe that for beginners to dive into an OpenEXR workflow is not really the most interesting to do as of yet. So uh, in the render mode right here, I will set my noise threshold to 0.1 and I will leave the samples to 4096. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's a very light background. So there's not going to be that much noise. Noise usually accumulates in the dark areas, you know. The max samples will make sure that it is being sampled enough so we actually get that sharp and clean look. You know, you don't want the iPhone to be having blurred edges or stuff like that. So we keep our samples high, we keep our noise threshold as high as possible, but not too high that it becomes lesser of a quality, let's say. And this is the way that I'm going to render it, and this will actually make your render a bit faster instead of leaving it to 0.01, for example. It will take a whole lot longer in order to render this out. So 0.1 is fine, start from there. If you don't like the result, decrease, 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 okay? And right now I am going to turn on the motion blur. You can play around with the final animation if you'd like. I show you exactly how to do it, how you can change the keyframe animations, how you can make a beautiful looking background, how you can make a camera animation. I've shown it all, and I will see you in the next video.
where we are going to be making a transition from this shot into another one. So you need to render this one out because in the next video we are going to transition from an iPhone outwards and then we're going to do some very cool rotation animation. So I'll see you in that video next. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.